And we're live. Hey. Yo. How's it going? Good. I'm good. Yeah. I uh I upgraded my computer with some new RAM all by myself today. Ooh. After some instructions from Paul. <laughs> Which was push the what stick in. <laughs> no, that, that's a tough instruction in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just usually when I upgrade my computer, I I I open up the box, go, well, I'm confused, and then I pay someone <laughs> to do it. Um, this time I was able to do it myself, um, yep. which I was pretty glad to see. Um, and it is an absolute game changer. I upgraded. I went from 12 gigs of RAM to 32. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's a big change. Huge. Yeah, it's a huge change. The the video editing power and speed I have now is ridiculous yeah um in comparison to what i was dealing with before it is it is an absolute game changer yep <clears throat> definitely i just realized i didn't bring a water bottle so this is gonna be a fun podcast <laughs> oh boy well i mean if you need to sneak off just sneak off yeah yeah maybe yeah we'll see how it goes um but what, what have you guys been doing in the last week mm. uh cleaning honestly just trying to get this all straightened up it's better, um, but I've still got some posters to finish hanging up, and I've still got to this zone over here. You can't quite see it; it's just out of camera shot. It is just full of like boxes and cords, like half hooked up stuff mm. that I just never got around to finishing. Now I'm actually finishing it up. Nice. Okay. Right on. Right on. Anything going on with you, Paul? No, I mean, we'll talk more specifically about some stuff, but I watched that DC fandom shit, uh, like the movies coming out and stuff. Pretty stoked for some of them. So that'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah, well, let's talk about some of like the movie stuff. What what piqued your interest? Is it the, don't say the Snyder Cut. No, Black Adam, specifically. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go back into the Shazam universe, and it's kind of dope that they're doing like Black Adam's origin rather than just having him as the next villain, like right away, so... That's dope. Yeah, I feel like if you get a a um a star as big as the rock, you have to get like his, his own movie. whole movie. Yeah. His whole absolutely. thing. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. I would like to see more uh Shazam. I, I enjoyed that. I'm yeah. a I'm a Zachary Levi fan. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll watch him in a movie for sure. Sure. So yeah, that was um, uh kind of interesting. Robert Pattinson's Batman seems like unruly in a way that's kind of exciting. He beats the shit out of that guy, probably till waypoint that guy's dead in that trailer. Past the point of awkwardness, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of awkward. <laughs> I, but I love the fact that like the bad guy's like, holy fuck, what is he doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's Batman year two, right? So he's he's still new to the whole thing and probably a little savage and raw. Yeah, a little yeah. angry, for sure. And it's, it looks like it's it, more focused on detective work this time around since he's dealing with Riddler, so... All right, I'm just yeah. stoked that it's Riddler. Like yeah. Riddler's my favorite Batman villain. I've wanted a Riddler movie uh, for a while. I remember back when, and um, it was still the Nolan trilogy, and the rumors were that Joseph Gordon-Levitt were going to play the Riddler, and I was stoked about that. I thought that was some good casting, but that you know that didn't end up happening. That would have been cool, <clears throat> for sure. That would I think that would have been cool for sure. But um, yeah, no, that looks good. I thought I think Wonder Woman looks real cool. I'm excited to see some more of that. Yep, uh, that looks cool. Um, the James Gunn version of Suicide Squad looks like what that movie should have been to begin with, so that's good. They only put out that, like, the cast trailer thing, right? Like, we didn't actually see anything besides just who's in it, and apparently everyone is in it. Yeah, like, all the actors. In that. A lot yeah. of people are in that movie. And it's so weird, because, like, that's a reboot, from what I understand. But, yeah. like... um several of the characters and actors from the last suicide squad movie are just back reprising those roles. Yeah. So that's just the most confusing thing ever. Like if you were a normal person and not someone that like follows, you know, movie and TV news, like I do, you would yeah. have no idea. You would just assume it's a sequel. Sure. John Cena playing oh. peacemaker is really good. <laughs> that's Who, good casting. Who's peacemaker. Should I be excited about peacemaker? No, just, I don't know. Some shitty douchey guy. That's John okay. Cena. <laughs> I'm 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 fine yeah. seeing John Cena play some more roles. I just don't know the uh, character he's playing, so I have I have no real opinion. Um, 
the last thing I saw John Cena in? What was that? It was that t- no, wrestling. There was a. It was that movie, cock blocking, cock blockers. Oh, That's what it was. Yep. Yeah. Common cock blockers. Yep. <laughs> As like the super protective dad. Yeah. And he was supposed to be in Fast and Furious Nine. You know, in a non-COVID world, I would have seen that. So. Sure. There, there is that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, no, the DC fandom. There was some pretty exciting news. Um. Yeah. Just pre- it's like the new Comic Con, like the better Comic Con for this year, I guess. Yeah, for this year, for sure. So, yeah, it was fun. Um, and then obviously the game stuff that's in our news. We'll talk about that more then. But yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, let's just start moving on to that stuff. So this is the top down perspective for August twenty seventh, and I'm Sean Booker. I'm Paul Fleck. I'm John Wheeler. Um. And uh, Paul, why don't you tell us what you've been playing while I get some water? Sure. I went, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I went ahead and uh, played the Avengers. Um, I want to I want to know your opinion on this, because yours is sure. kind of what I value in this situation, because okay. I see you as someone who enjoys this kind of game, like the core concepts behind it. <laughs> the thing and about I want your this opinion game is that from everything I played and saw, it's just so mediocre. It hurts. There's okay. Nothing, I'm not crazy. Thank God. There's nothing bad about it, but there's nothing above decent. <laughs> like there's nothing good or great about it. The fact that like the first time you play as Iron Man, you're literally just flying. Like the first thing you want to do, right? You play as kind of all of them in this weird little opening montage that kind of takes way too long before it actually gets to the game stuff. Is um, you play as iron man and the first thing you do is shoot upwards because you can fucking fly and then it's, it's like go back to the uh mission area two three two one and you're like what the fuck is this and then it like reloads you back down like because they don't want you having fun or anything um mm-hmm. and that's the first time that it's like oh this is a bummer <laughs> like that kind of sucks yeah yeah um i guess luckily you never play as iron man basically again in that beta <laughs> so like, <laughs> <laughs> you forget how much of a bummer that is um, theoretically he's one of the like tentpole characters people are going to play as next week yeah um, oh god that is next week isn't it it Ugh. is yeah i am wondering if it's going to be a little more open at some point, but I doubt it. I'm sure there's going to be like sky boxes and like a weird like thing where you bump into the sky. It's certain missions or whatever, if you're trying to fly or whatever, because like you kind of do play them in like the training room version thing of uh, yeah that they have later on. But like you're in a contained room, so you still don't really get to fly. You're just kind of in a little concealed area, so it still isn't great or anything. Um, when you unlock the war missions, you can eventually play as Tony in the demo yeah. as well, too. Yeah, you unlock him in Black Widow, I think. I didn't play as yes, either yes. of them because I was done by the time you unlock that stuff. There's a lot of uh, yeah. bullshit until you unlock how that game actually will play, like a lot of intro mm-hmm. stuff. I think the story yeah. stuff is really neat. I think Miss Marvel is the best part of that game, uh, character-wise. She's great. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, her weird floppy limbs when you're controlling her are just, like, great game animation shit of them just getting all long and her fists getting huge. And just it just feels like good game bullshit. Uh, she's really satisfying to play as. The Hulk should be one-shotting dudes that aren't armored because he's the fucking Hulk. Um, yeah, Hulk doesn't feel right, does he? <laughs> There's something about him that just feels off. It's really lame, yeah. He feels really lame. I will say... The conceit of everybody else like has armor pieces or like pieces that they put on. His upgrades are literally just like you're changing his DNA or something. So now he has new hands. I think that's funny. Like, oh, we're, I gotta change out Bruce Banner's spine because this one is. I gotta get him some Hulk hands. One. Need some more Hulk hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything. It's just so like aggressively mediocre. I think is the thing. Um. Again, I really don't think it's bad at all. I think if you had some buddies that were getting it, it would be a fun time for a while. But, like, I can't see paying full price for that thing. That doesn't feel like a full price product to me. 
uh, personally. And that's a scary thing. Like they're they're trying to aim it to, uh, towards it having a ton of content. And, and like, it just I just it didn't grab me at all. And like straight up, that might as well be a PlayStation exclusive because I just want to play a Spider Man. As far as I'm concerned, no other version exists. If Spider Man doesn't exist in the other ones, but, but based on how this plays, do you think he'll get a fair shake? I don't know. Do you think he'll even play good? Yeah, like yeah, you see I my point here. <laughs> um, I do know this would be a game I would pick up on a good sale, like a Days of PlayStation fifty percent off or something. I could see me uh, throwing down like thirty or forty bucks for this, probably, uh, especially if I know people playing it. And then I'll, like, play with them. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. It's just, did you guys see, actually, you can't fail the cutscenes in this thing, apparently? And somebody posted, like, they were, the first cutscene is Thor coming down with, like, his hammer and doing, like, a ground pound. And that's kind of how, like, the whole gameplay part starts after the, like, intro movie. And uh, some guy on Twitter wanted to, like, do the funny thing where you fail the QTE on purpose because then it looks funny and, like, you fucked up or whatever. And the game just completely stopped mid-air, and even the sound and music and literally everything stopped until he pushed a button. And it was the most weirdly yep. awkward, unfinished bullshit I've seen in a while. <laughs> I can't tell that was part of the beta or not, but I can't something either. tells me it's not. I, something tells me that's how it's going to be in the actual game. Something tells me that's how it is, too. Yeah, because there was something else. I don't remember what happened. Where I similarly had a thing where it's just like, oh, the music just stopped until, like, I find the thing I need in this quest. Okay. I think this it was is weird. Oh, I had it happen for, like, not using my super or something like that. Yeah, I think that was it, maybe. Like, you gotta, you gotta use Unibeam. I don't want to use Unibeam. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really weird. Um, And the conceit's fine. Like, I like the idea of a giant explosion happens that turns, like, a bunch of people into weird superheroes and like they're trying to find a cure for the superhero virus it's standard marvel bullshit uh storyline wise but i think it's a comic works. story yeah yeah i think it works uh for this weird conceit of why would you be playing in a universe where a bunch of people all of a sudden have superpowers it's like oh because terrorism um yeah i don't know man i would really 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 like to see some opinions on this from people that pick it up i don't think it's worth hating on, but man, it is so just like so boring <laughs> in a lot of ways. And it's kind of a bummer. It could have been something really good. And instead it was like barely meeting the standard of okay. And that's probably the biggest crime it commits, honestly. Um, yeah, I feel bad. Cause I got the email to like apply for a review copy. And I'm like, that's the only way I'm going to play the full game, isn't it? For free. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. yeah, and even then, you know what? There's a bunch of games I want to play that I've paid for that like, I would rather play. <laughs> like, I, if I knew how much game there was, I don't know if I'd be more or less in, enticed too. Because like, yeah, it's clearly like meant to be like a co-op, like like a, a sort of Marvel Ultimate Alliance style totally. game, but done like more free flow. But like, I can't get a good handle on how much game is there, or like how much of it is just doing all weird like little things. Like over and over and over again. And to yeah. some extent, I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm, I like Destiny. I like Warframe. I like games where you literally on the same map doing a, one different thing a thousand times. And that's not a problem with me. But there's something about this game that doesn't feel satisfying when you do it. Even. I don't know what it is. Maybe they need to like increase the amount of loot that drops or something. I don't know. It's weird. Um... So that's the Avengers. The other game I started playing is Hellpoint. This is the indie uh, Cradle Games published by Tiny Build uh, sci-fi horror Souls-like game that came out a couple months ago. That was a mouthful. Yeah, I needed to get it all in there. So it is a $30. It is a half-price Souls-like game that takes place in a horror space setting. And not a whole lot to say about that. 11 people team, so it's a little janky. Uh, it's fun, though. So far, it's pretty fun. I wouldn't say there's anything too outstandingly new or anything. I just kind of like the setting. It feels kind of dead spacey in setting, where you're just on this, like, derelict, shitty space station. You're trying to figure out what happened. And uh, there's a bunch of horrific monsters and stuff that are there. So, yeah, it's cool. 
Um, I need to play more of it before I can g really get into the juice of it because I'm only about five hours in right now. And I think it's about a 15 hour game, people have told me. So I haven't even reached the halfway point. But so far, it's so good. So far, it's pretty good. Uh, that's all I've been playing. Uh, right on, John. You uh, have some interesting Resident Evil Five stuff. I understand. Yeah, sorry, John. You were cutting out on my side here. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't really been playing much, really, in my spare time. Uh, mainly <laughs> just what we're what we're doing on Patreon uh, after the podcast. But this week, this past weekend, I played Resident Evil Five with the voice actor for Wesker, DC Douglas. How hard so did you have to this... carry? <laughs> um. He started drinking so very. Oh, oh no. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. He yeah, was yeah, he yeah. was actually a blast to have on. Okay. But uh yeah, no, so this I've actually been had been playing and unlocking Resident Evil 5 stuff for like weeks. So that's okay. why I hadn't really had much to add in my game list because I didn't want to tell people I was working on this sure. until it was like locked in for sure. So uh yeah, no, I've been playing Resident Evil 5 for like like a month straight now, I feel like at this point. Ew. and uh That's we we did we did a stream on saturday where like it was we did it for like four or five hours where we just played a bunch and just shat the shit like it like it was great sure we, just, we like we shoot the shit and just like tell he would tell stories about like voice acting work and being in hollywood it was just it was real fun and uh we're actually gonna do it again in the future too like uh on oh, nice. not this saturday yeah not this saturday but the next saturday the 5th of september we're gonna continue the playthrough Originally, he was going to have a bunch of different people on, but he was just like, yeah, screw it. Well, you and me play through together. Nice. So we got about, we got like a fourth to a third through the game. We're at, we're starting world three okay. or chapter three, rather. Mm -hmm. If you know the game, that's where you have the, uh, the pontoon boat. Right. So, uh, yeah, no, look forward to that again. Uh, other than that, everything I've been playing, I can't really talk about at the moment, so. I have a bunch of promo things I'm doing tomorrow. I'm playing a game, a beat em up called Shing tomorrow. And then uh, I'm doing on Saturday with Fortune Cookie some uh, Frontier games. So the guys who did uh, Elite Dangerous, Planet Zoo, and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Since, since it's Gamescom. So uh, that's about all I've been playing. Nice. It is Gamescom. That's right. Uh, I've been playing a few new games. I'm going to start with this Samurai Jack game, which I don't remember the full title of. Battle Through Time. Battle Through Time, okay. Uh, the reason I don't remember the full title of it is I played the first level and deleted it off my phone. Wow. Uh, um, <laughs> wow. That game sucks. It's so bad. Um, part of what I'm disliking about it might be the Apple Arcade version. Maybe it just doesn't run very well on my phone. But you know what? No, you know what? My phone, it, like it's 2020. My phone is quite powerful. This is only a two-year-old phone at this point, right? sure. so it should be able to play it just fine. But um, it's also weird, at, like as a Samurai Jack fan, so it takes place. It, it, so it takes place in the final season, like when they brought the show back a few years ago and did that final season to end it. it takes place during that, um, but it's because it's like a time travel thing. I guess it takes place in like. Oh, one of the times Jack was going through a portal during that last season, uh, he actually went on this complete other adventure. And that's the game. Um, mm. And, you know, they can just kind of fit it in whenever because time travel. Also, it spoils a bunch of stuff for season five, eight, five, five, whatever the most recent, the final season of Samurai Jack is. So if you if you are somewhat interested in Samurai Jack and seeing the ending, you know, you're going to get spoiled a little bit. But I don't even know who that person is. Who's who's the Samurai Jack fan? Like, cares enough that they could be spoiled, but then also didn't watch the show's ending. Is, does that person yeah. even exist? Um, so, honestly, so you're going to start, right. and you're going to see a bunch of, like, the show animation. You're just going to be like, I don't know who any of these people are. There's Jack. I, I remember that guy. And then they they fling you into a portal, and then you show up in the game world. I still think the game world just looks like garbage compared to the show. And I mean, that's fine. You're not going to do the show's art style. Okay. You have your own art style, but then don't show me the show like back to back with it. Stop interspersing the really nice animation that I love 
with your with the ugly thing because it just makes it seem even worse and like the menus are all designed to and, and have the correct art and everything and so it's like everywhere you look it's the nice stuff and then when you're playing it with it it's this bad frame rate ugly looking polygonal beat em up um it's, it's just boring the environments look terrible it looks like a 360 era game it is such an ugly wow. looking game and mm-hmm. yeah yes. like i i did the first did the first mission or the first level or whatever and then you know i didn't delete it immediately and a few days later i was like honestly don't want to play any more of this i, I don't want to uh, so i took it off my phone it is just a, a waste of time um that's too bad yeah <laughs> Yeah, like the frame rate's terrible. Like it's a beat up where they throw a bunch of robots at you, and then every time they do that, though, it's the frame rate dies. <laughs> so cool, thanks. Like the one thing you should be doing correctly, can't get it right. I, yeah, I just don't. I don't like that thing. Um, I think they got the. I think they got all the voice actors. At least I'm pretty sure they have Jack. They got him in there. Um, okay. so I guess that's. Yeah, from what nice. I from what I saw, it was most of them, or if not all of them, back. Um, there's a weird... sense, that that last season was only last year, right? I think that no, that last season I think was in 2015. It's definitely not last year because I remember uh, I was at a different job when that came out. I don't think it was that late, but I don't think maybe you're right. Hang on, uh, 2017. Okay, it's in between. Um, there's a weird like momentum on the camera, like. You'll like spin the camera around and it'll keep moving a bit before it sets into place, which kept throwing me off. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you shouldn't play that game. Don't play that game. I won't. Yeah. Uh, more interestingly, though, I've been playing a whole bunch of Spirit Fairer. Spirit Fairer? Spirit Fairer? Anyway, um, this is out on, I think, everything. It's on Game Pass. I'm playing it on Game Pass. Yep. Uh, I've been looking forward to this thing for quite a while since it was announced. I think maybe like last E3. I think it showed up at an Xbox presentation. Sounds right. Yeah. Uh, you are Stella, this young girl who has taken over being the spirit fairer, uh, otherwise known as Caron. Caron, however, however you pronounce it. Um, Charon, but the Caron, the uh, boat. Uh, salesman boat boatsman uh who ferries uh spirits to the afterlife um so he quit or he's done or retiring or whatever and he says you're the new spirit fairer so good luck sends you out there with a boat um and then from there it is it's definitely not what i expected i was surprised to see what genre this game is but it's pretty much a management sim you know like a side scrolling flat management sim something like stardew valley or um What's the other one that's actually flat? <laughs> that Paul, aren't you? Uh, anyway, um, mm-hmm. so it's management sim. You know, it's like like Stardew Valley, like Animal Crossing. It's like that. You are collecting these spirits that you'll find on various islands, and then you basically you can make them like a house. You can upgrade their house. You're crafting uh, wool into like wool fibers that turn into wool thread that turn into wool fabric. So you can use them in all different sorts of in, things you're growing food so you can sell the food so you can use it for crafting your cooking it's it is straight up just a it, easy breezy management sim and, and i think that's the key that is working for me because um it, like it, it is it is so just this at your own pace take as long as you want there is no big deal to anything and, and i kind of like that and i also like that there is enough of like a a, a quest line of things you should be focusing on. You know, I talk about why Stardew Valley didn't really hit it for me, and, and it was kind of just too open ended, and I got overwhelmed with all the things going on in Stardew Valley. And this has a lot of that stuff. Like you can go to mine areas and mine for ore and stuff like that. Like it has a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, various mini games that you'll go, you'll you'll sail to different areas, and you can you can do like the the glowing jellyfish little mini game to collect more of that resource and whatnot. Um, but I like that it just has these like straight up a like, quest log of like, hey, why don't you try and build a windmill? And it's like, okay, I'm gonna pick one of these things, and I'm just gonna focus on what I, on collecting the things I need to build a windmill. And then after that, I'll move on to the next thing and the next thing. And the characters, they're all pretty interesting, and and they all have a backstory that will slowly kind of be revealed to you. 
um, and you're you're trying to make them happier and whatnot. And each character has a happiness gauge. So every now and then they'll be like, "Hey, I'm hungry," and you can you know give them a strawberry or you can cook them like like uh, grilled veggies and and give them that. And if you want, they all have dislikes and and likes and stuff like that. But all that is like not super required. You can kind of just do whatever you really want. Um, as long as you're kind of going through the the uh, checklist and eventually it'll open up the map further and further to you. I want to say I'm around eight or so hours in. If you're playing it, I just got the ice breaker. The iceberg breaker thing for my boat. So now I can finally go to like the second chunk of the map. It's now opened up to me because they kind of gate your gate you where you are on the world map. I um like one is too foggy for you to go so you can't go to that area one has a bunch of icebergs so you can't go to that area i can now go to that second area because i can break icebergs um and there's like an overarching narrative you're you know hades shows up from time to time just like i've been watching you i've I've only ferried one person completely to the afterlife which basically just means i went to the end of their quest log Uh um which was just a series of like i made their house perfect i made them real happy and I jumped around and, you know, you're you're doing various fetch, fetch quests for the most part um, until I got to the end of their quest log. And then they're like, I'm content. You know, take me to the gate. Um, and then you get this this really kind of nice little send off for that character. And I should say like the game looks fantastic. Yeah, it's all hand drawn colors are out the wazoo. Like it just looks so nice. And all the characters are these like anthropomorphized animals. Everyone you can give everyone a hug is pretty great and, and super adorable you just go up to a person and you give them a nice big hug and there's a good squeeze sound it's very <laughs> buoyant as blob esque like a like a, i've never have i seen a good hug since buoyant as blob new 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 game of the hug right here um and that's great and, and sometimes they don't want a hug sometimes they were hugged recently and they're good or they'll just be like that would not make me happy right now and i respect that and you can't give them a hug mm-hmm. um true yeah so that's pretty great. You got a cat that follows you around. I think you can actually play local co-op and someone can play as the cat. I haven't tried doing any of that, but yeah, it is just such an easy game to be like, mm-hmm. I'm going to do one more, one more thing. I'm going to, I just want to make sure I get this one last uh, shelter build. I, I want to just grow this tree. And it's just so easy to just kind of keep going. Cause it is just such a chill, nice, nice little game. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. So you, you, you go to the map. You pick, I want to go here, and then the boat will just start going there, and there'll be like a progress bar in the top left, and then you just hang out on your ship, growing trees or cooking food or doing whatever else you really want to do. Uh, and then, like I said, there's tons of little things you can find out in the, in the world. Like, there's dragons you can come across, and, and they need your help. There's giant tortoises, and, and they'll grow trees on their back for you, so you can come back to them later. Like, it's a it's a, it's a a really interesting game. Um, so if, 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 if For fans of, like, Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, stuff like that, you should check out... Uh, spirit fair and like i said it's on game pass yep um and speaking of game pass uh today tell me why came out i've not finished it yet so i will i will go into that saying it i don't know how long that first episode is um if people need a, a reference of what tell me why is this is the new game from don't nod the studio that did the uh, life is strange games yep um so like i said i'm about an hour and a half in this this series is only going to be three episodes coming out on a weekly basis. Um, I don't know if, they're, if that means they're going to be longer episodes, if it's the same length of episode, but it's just a shorter overall game. I don't know yet. I haven't seen and I, it's too new to kind of do that research so far. <laughs> yeah, I will say in comparison to Life is Strange, it, it plays like those games again. So if you don't like the gameplay of Life is Strange, you will not like this. This is a, you know, you walk around the environment you interact with a bunch of stuff in a room as the character kind of monologues to themselves and talks about like the history of the you know, little figurine you picked up in the room or whatever like that. Right. Um, if a strange games typically have some kind of supernatural element, this one does as well. You play, you play a set of twins, Allison mm-hmm. and a Tyler. I don't know how much you play as Allison. You played as as Allison first for a bit, but now it's exclusively been Tyler. So I don't know if it's Tyler for the whole time or not, but it hasn't gone back to Allison for me anyway. um, And they have like, they have twin voice so they can talk to each other in their heads. Okay. um, Which you just know there's going to be a part where like one of them gets like trapped or kidnapped or something. And they have to talk to each other that way. Like you just know that's coming. That is so coming. Um, 
they also can see memories in real life. Um, so, you know, the, I, you know, I don't want to get too much into the story, but there was like some tragic uh, history with the, with these twins. And I'm at their like, um, childhood home and you can like zoom in on areas and then like a ghost version of a little scene will play out, but it plays out like in, in the environment and both of them can see it. But they got some like mind connect thing. Sure. That seems to be the extent of like the supernatural powers. But um, I will say uh, the graphics has bumped up another notch since Life is Strange 2. This is a nicer looking game, but it is definitely still the same engine. You know, if you're familiar with how they kind of show their their models and stuff, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's how they show tears. The eyes just kind of get glassy right right around the nose. That's exactly what a Life is Strange game looks like. Um, so it's like I, like I said, it's pretty familiar. You, you're already going to know if you're interested in these games um yeah i think i think the messaging so far has been a little heavy-handed um yeah then again it's kind of it's so the the kind of the big thing with this game is is it involves a trans uh protagonist and they were go, sh- going out online being like it's the first game with a trans protagonist we're the first ones blah blah blah, or whatever um part of it's a little heavy-handed with that but the other part is like well the whole story seems to actually be revolving around this character transitioning so i kind of understand that being sure. a little heavy handed, but some of the messaging, it's like I did already pick up on that. But thank you for actually saying it out loud. I don't know. Anyway, I'm an hour and a half in. I'm enjoying my time with it, but I'm a Life is Strange fan. So, of course, I'm going to enjoy my time with it. And it's it's more of that. And uh, it's set in Alaska and the, the environments they built are really nice looking. Sure. Um, so uh, I'm having fun with it. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, that was Tell Me Why. That's all I've been playing. Let's go through all of this news. Yeah. All right. Some stuff happened. Some stuff. A happened. lot of stuff, actually, by the looks of it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it happened today. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. All right, so where do you want to start? Let's start with DC Fandom then. Yeah. And did you guys see that Wonder Woman trailer? No. Yeah. It looked OK. I, I saw, I saw the first, I saw the first trailer. Yeah. yeah. I see the Batman trailer. I'm really excited that it's Riddler. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't remember if we had this discussion on po- on cast or not. That's why I'm like, I can't tell we're doing a bit yet. <laughs> um, All right, let's talk about the games that they showed. So they showed yeah, Gotham Knights, a four person, four protagonist. Two person. Huh? No, four. Co-op. Two, two, two player co-op. Player, four protagonist uh, Batman <laughs> game. So what yep. is actually only two player, not four? It's like, only two I, two player. The gameplay was only showing two. It's only two, two player co op. There's four uh, my protagonists. Inter- my interest you can pick is from. dipped a bit. My interest is dipped a bit. I was hoping this was four. Know. I'm I'm fine with two. It's rare I've got. I, I, four I'm glad to get a co op one, but I was also yeah. hoping for some like Ninja Turtles esque escapades. That would have been dope. I don't know right. how they would have done that, but yeah, that would have been dope. <laughs> I agree. Um. Yeah, this is the new game from Warner Brothers Montreal that they've been hinting at the whole time. Quarter owls are in there. The quarter owls are cool. They are cool. This series. is the first. This um, is the first time they were in a game thing, right? Like, yeah, because they were just invented. Like, I want to say maybe like a few years ago. Like, they're they're no, pretty. They're new like twenty ten ish. Like within the last ten years, no. I think. Yeah. Within the last ten years, as in a few years ago, yeah. I'll look it up quickly. No way. What are we? Lo- what are we looking really? up? Or the Court of Owls, 2011. Uh, Ow! Oh yeah. man, I I would have said it was like 2016. I remember them being so more recent than that. Anyway, um, Court of Owls there um, starts off with so Batman's died. So yeah. his uh his all of his uh his proteges mates. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it is straight up based in the Arkham universe because that's how Arkham Knight ends. Yeah, his uh Operation Nightfall or whatever they called it. You guys think Batman's actually dead? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, of course, right? Yeah, I <laughs> no. mean, in this timeline, maybe I don't know. It's a comic book. They could make. They could just do a Batman reboot for video games. I oh, I totally get it. I'm asking <laughs> you. Inside of Arkham Knight, in Gotham Knights, the game. Yeah. Does Batman come back to life by the time before you finish that story? Yeah, I probably. Don't I don't think yeah, he comes I, I back he to does. life. He might may, not be may, dead. May, Maybe they'll go crazy That's and tie I mean, into like, like that when Batman yeah. time traveled. Maybe they'll just do something crazy like that. That would be kind of great. Old, that was that was a weird story arc. I do remember that. Uh, yeah, caveman okay. Batman. Oh, that'd be so good. 
fun fact about that. So when he like died during was the story arc. It wasn't Crisis on Infinite Earth. It was called. Well, when he remember. when he when he did die before he did the time travel back thing. There's this image of Superman holding Batman's like burnt body. Um, and then and that year that came out my um, my graduation year of high school, and they asked me to do design the uh, yearbook cover because because they wanted it to be comic book themed, and then I read comic books, and I was like, I was oh, you know no. one of the like primary art kids graduating, <laughs> blah blah blah, and I was like, yeah, sure. So I I based it off of that image, and I had okay. two teachers recreate that pose in the <laughs> in the school basement so i could photo it for an image thing and then i and i redrew them so my yearbook for my graduating yearbook is one of the teachers going like ah! well the other one's dead in his hands and they're all they're in like <laughs> superman and batman <laughs> costumes and there's a big fiery background and everyone everyone got that as the cover for the yearbook sean really you great. had like the, you had like the best like yeah. high school experience i did, I did really yeah did. Uh, i remember when halfway through they were we were like doing like a checkup like hey where's the design going and i was showing them where i'm at with this and they were like wow this is kind of a lot and i was like i wasn't under the impression this was like two-way conversation i i don't have a second plan this is what i'm making and they were like oh man so i kept going with it and then we on the next check-in they were like wait you stayed with i guess we're stuck with it <laughs> and that, Great. um because they didn't make it clear to stop so uh -huh. um so it was great. Yeah. Well, because they probably awesome. already put money aside for it or whatever they were doing. So was well, like, I think well, it was just too late. Now. Like it hadn't yeah. gone up to the printing or anything. It was just too late to like make a new one. Uh -huh. Um, uh, that's and funny. that was awesome. And it was it's definitely the coolest because up to that point, it was all just like the school's logo, like a starry I mean, background or, you know, your that's classic exactly what mine was. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. And then and then mine that year, boom very superhero teachers so cool next very you need to find that. you need to find that and get a picture of it put it on twitter or something it, it would be that, somewhere that, back home I amazing can, i'll i'll look for a picture I, I probably have one on like a hard drive because i'm sure i put that in like a portfolio at, at one point or something anyway sure <laughs> gotham knights yeah for for the proteges we got oh yeah oh yeah, yeah we're talking about i it. forgot <laughs> Uh, we got Nightwing, uh, Bat Robin, Batgirl, Batgirl and Red Hood. Uh, as uh, with Red Hood just has a gun. He just has guns. Well, I'm yeah. amazed they're just like, yeah, fuck it, Red Hood. Yep. I know it's, I mean, it I know it's sense. high in the night, but it's still like, wow, okay. Um, yep. Who Who's your, who do you want to play as? Like, what are you most interested in out of the four? Batgirl, honestly, and Red Knight. From how Hood, they rather. showed, like, from that little teaser, if they play any differently, it looked like she was definitely more the, like, play style i do of hiding in the shadows taking a guy out and then like killing the last one or whatever taking the last one out uh, so i wanted to say red robin did he have some kind of like invisibility or teleport thing invisibility or could, teleport thing could have sworn i was seeing I think him he had, teleporting he had some cloaking thing yeah, I, I thought that was cool um so i get so red robin's my vote that's who i want to play as I'm actually scrubbing through the video right now. I, I thought feel Nightwing like I... looked the lamest. Yeah, I agree. I wasn't. But we, we've already played as Nightwing in previous games. To be fair, I think we've also played as Batgirl in previous games. So, yeah. And uh, I guess Tim was that. in uh, the last one as well. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yep. Anyway, um, definitely interesting. Uh, I hope it's different enough from other arkham games i don't know yeah uh and they also showed off suicide squad i didn't actually watch this trailer yeah they didn't really show anything worthwhile except the tone of it which is just the suicide squad are hanging out complaining that they have to work and then Bat superman is like mind controlled or whatever comes down kills a dude in front of them and they're like oh all right and then the thing comes up it's nothing too special. 2022, I understand, which why that's so far. In it. Yeah, oh, which is smokes. probably why they didn't show anything except for a trailer. Because, <laughs> you know, well, haven't they been working on this game for like six years? Yeah, I don't know, man. It seems like it'll be maybe 
fun. I don't know. It that apparently has four player co op. They're saying, so yeah. Who knows? Honestly, it kind of just makes me think of the Avengers game we were just talking about. Yeah, I'm assuming it would play kind of like that. I'm a little no afraid. No one seems to be into that. I'm a little yeah, like afraid I'm, that's what they're doing. Yeah, I'm curious what the differences would be. I I don't know. Uh, good looking Harley Quinn. I thought the, the from the screenshot, her face looks real good. Sure. Yeah. They all um, look okay. They got King. They got King Shark. I think he should be voiced by Ron Funches because I'm watching that cartoon, and uh, that's <laughs> okay. a great version of King Shark. Sure. But that's just me. Yeah. Honestly, not a whole lot was shown on that. Because again, like you said, 2022. So yeah. we're. That's I was the surprised there was no Injustice Three announcement. Mm. So I would have guessed. I mean, there's they're still doing Mortal Kombat content, so I'm assuming they're just not ready for it. Right. Sure. I just remember because Ed Boon was on the list of like uh, people that are going to be at DC Fandom. I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Anyway, what else yeah. you got, Paul? What else I got? Yo. How about Pokemon Go for The Witcher? <laughs> so, Pass. The, all the, right, the, all right. The Witcher sure. Monster Slayer is coming out, and uh, it's an AR mobile game that plays like Pokemon Go, where you go to a spot and there will be a monster of some sort from the Witcher series that you have to take out there, or a quest giver who will ask you to do like a quest for them. It, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> It's a weird open world, real life Witcher thing that they're trying to do here. Um, this was just announced like the other day. So there is a video of gameplay of it. I linked it in our thing here. I'll link it in the chat if anybody wants to watch it as well. Um, it is literally just what you think it is. If you think Pokemon Go, but with Witcher monsters. It'd be weird announcing this because it, obviously it, it's been in development for a while and then the pandemic hits and people are trapped inside their house. So they yeah, can't the, walk the timing is not the best. It's weird. Uh, I mean, they probably had to. I mean, they probably got to a point where it's like, yo, we can't just sit on this game. We have to get it out and start getting some money in here. Yeah. Um, I, I feel for them. Yep. So the Witcher Monster Slayer. I'm kind of excited to see how it works out. We'll see. Um, it, who? What studio is working on it? It's not Neontic, right? No, I think it's it them. Not I think it's them in house, right? Uh, let me see if it says here. It's CD Projekt Red. Really? I'd be surprised. Uh, Spocko, member of the CG Project family. Never heard of Spocko. Oh, S P O K K O. I'm just like a Jetsons character. Um. It's part of their in-house family for sure, and they this made, is their first yeah, thing. Yeah, they got made in 2018. Yeah, I bet to do this exact thing. Yeah, yep. I think so. They, 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 yeah. So, okay. Well, hopefully it works out for them. Good for them. Uh, Guild Wars Two is coming to Steam in November, so people that have been playing that still or want to get into that, that's coming to a normal launcher near you in a few months and expansion three for that game is coming out next year. I didn't get into guild wars that much. So this isn't anything I really have to say on just kind of a public service announcement. Uh, crisis remastered release date was announced. Finally, this was shown or this was teased earlier this year that this is coming. Uh, there is a video that is kind of like a tech demo showing the old tech. And then like, it turns into like the new tech of, how they've remastered it with a uh, um, RTX ready bullshit and blah, blah, blah. So you can check that out uh, if you look up Crisis Remastered, but that comes out September 18th. So that should be interesting. Uh, there were a bunch not of... Even, not even that far away. Yeah, no, I know. Just kind of came out of nowhere. There were some Rainbow Six Siege leaks uh, by a leaker in the community. The first one of which was a kill confirm type game mode where it's 10 minutes. Uh, it sounds like just like the Call of Duty mode. I'll read what the thing here says. It says, uh, one round, 10 minute timer. Players can respawn. All operators have impacts or frags and automatically refilling flash or smoke grenades. Um, and it is the kill confirm mode. If you kill a dude and you have to pick up their like dog tag or whatever they drop to confirm it for your team. 
yeah, so that's coming. Also, a leak of what's coming for the Halloween event. Some Muppet-themed, like, weird monster puppet-type uh, alpha packs were shown. So people what? are saying there's probably going to be a weird, like, maybe monster puppet theme. That kind of sounds amazing, though. <laughs> yeah. Curious if it's like an actual crossover with like the licensed Muppets. No, but I I'm doubt sure it. They probably wouldn't show up in an M rated game. No, um, I'm sure it's not a licensed thing. They're referring to it as a puppet event or whatever, the community. Okay. So, uh, what if it was like you're just, you know, you're trying to break into this house uh, and off in the corner there, animals playing the drums? Yeah. With a gun for the whole time. Yeah, that would be kind of amazing. I actually uh, kind of want this now. Yeah, that would be very good. I would love that. Ralph's there. He's on the piano. Yep. Be good. I'd be. Yeah. I just want I want to play a siege game and 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 Fozzie's there and he's telling bad jokes and just every now and then you hear Waka Waka. Yeah. Uh, if you. I'll put this in the chat as well, but under that Halloween event, there's like a 10 second video or whatever of somebody just showing the pack off. Uh, that should be interesting. And stuff that came from the Discord, Dragon's Dogma is getting an anime and it's out in about three weeks from now on Netflix, September 17th. I like Dragon's Dogma a lot. I don't know that I care about this, but I'm sure I'll watch it because quarantine. Sure. In other Netflix stuff, Resident Evil series Netflix crap mm -hmm. was kind of leaked, and uh, it's yeah, about a live the, action show. It's about the Wesker kids going to New Raccoon City. Yep. Hell yeah! Is that good or bad? I mean, New Raccoon City has definitely been a fan fiction did you thing ask him, for did years. You ask the voice actor about this. No, because this I didn't get this. This didn't get an answer like today. You yeah. gonna ask him about it? I I feel like no. He's already tweeted about it, and he said he was joking like, "Hey, if you need a vo Wesker voice, yeah, I'm here for you." There's no way he has anything to do with this because this is Billy and something Wesker, some weird kids that they made up. <laughs> I'm assuming like yes, his dad this is the would weird thing because he like, literally already episode. has kids. Yep, or he a sure kid. Not. They could. Yeah, this is just so here. Let me read you what was given. Maybe Wesker's this. a little promiscuous <laughs> and he's got kids. Oh, in no, a few he definitely is. Like, that's that's not a hidden thing. 14 year old sisters Jade and Billy Wesker moved to New Raccoon City. A manufactured corporate old? town forced them, uh, forced on them right as adolescence is in full swing. The more time they spend there, the more they come to realize the town is more than it seems and their father may be concealing dark secrets. Secrets that could destroy the world. Uh, the second, oh, wait, so Wesker is alive? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Because this next part makes it seem like he isn't. Uh, the second, more than a decade into the future, so this is like a split timeline thing going on, sees less than 15 million people left on Earth and more than 6 billion monsters, people and animals infected with the T-virus. Jade, now 30, struggles to survive in this new world, while secrets from the pat from her past about her sister, her father, and herself continue to haunt her. So, the so thing is it a is, tie into the movie series then? Yeah, I don't know. Or is it just its own thing? I was. This is its own thing. And as I was saying to somebody earlier today, Resident Evil fans are used to bullshit with the Resident Evil thing on it. We don't care anymore. Like, we'll watch it. We'll see if it's any good. <laughs> Who cares? And then Resident Evil we'll be hasn't been good in years, so. Um, is there anything smaller than the Gamescom stuff, or should we just jump into this? <laughs> like, what do you do? Uh, I'd here? say everything else I put in the doc is smaller, but we can go into Gamescom. I don't care. Uh, yeah, let's go into Gamescom. So Gamescom opening right. night happened earlier. Opening night live? Opening you? night live. Yep. F. Keeley's opening night live. Yep. Um, so they just showed off and announced a bunch of stuff. I thought this was kind of boring, personally, besides a few standouts. But uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, as soon as they had the pre-show with what's his name, um, who was just hilarious, and uh, as soon as he did the interview with Keeley during the pre-show, and Keeley's like, "Set your expectations. This is not a lot of huge stuff." I was like, "Oh, this is going to be pretty slow." Yeah, boy. <laughs> if, he, if he's saying that now, um, so I do have these. Are, are these order. all in order? This they looks are. pretty in order. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So they started off with cod blops. Uh, Cold War, which makes sense because that was kind of discovered, mined, whatever you want to call it, announced on Twitter uh, like two days Doritos ago. Doritos gave it away. Yeah, a day ago, something like that. Um, this is what they've kind of been building up in Warzone with the bunkers and the numbers and all that sort of shit in game. Uh, so they just showed that trailer off. It's set after Black Ops 1. After the events of Black Ops 1 during the middle of the Cold War, a lot of those same characters are still hanging out, doing CIA things and black operations, as it were. Yeah, I don't know. It Neighbor has fun. started his trumpet practice, I guess. Nice. <laughs> Just in time for the show. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Right. He can play us out. Um <clears throat> So one quick thing about this, this was a when it when it got like a fully revealed the yesterday, I believe. <clears throat> um, along with that came all. So it's coming out November 13th, uh, along with all of like the pricing information and the and the different <clears throat> versions. And that led to a whole bunch of confusion about uh -huh. which ones you get and how you get. Um, so at the very beginning, $60 is the standard version. $70 is the cross gen version and then they have like See a $90 both. ultimate yeah. version. Now so okay, so I also found this tweet from like a Call of Duty news account that was trying to break stuff down. If you're planning to get a physical copy of this game, get a physical copy of the PS4 version, you can upgrade to the PS5 version for another 10 bucks. You get a physical copy of the Xbox 1 version, you cannot upgrade to the Xbox Series X. What? Uh, huh. If you get a physical copy of the PS5 version, you only get the PS5 version. If you get a physical copy of the Series X version, you also get a copy of the Xbox One version. What? <laughs> okay. All right, then. Yeah, I don't. It, it sounds really confusing. I don't. It doesn't seem like there's a super straight answer. I can't tell you for digital. Like I said, I was getting so much weird information. Um, but I yeah, I don't I don't know. I think what I was also reading. Is that. If you just want one version of the game, I think you can get it for 60 bucks. I think to, if the only time you need to spend 70 is if you're trying to get like both versions of the game, like a cross, like, like the cross gen kind of stuff. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Luck to anyone who's out there. The, the joys of being between generations. Yep. Yep. Uh, next, it's even on. harder this time because like Mike, there's Microsoft over here being like, no, we're going to make it free. Blah, blah, blah. You guys should jump on the bandwagon. And then Sony being like, Maybe, maybe we'll do that. And then developers having to kind of figure out what they're going to do. And then like EA's here being like, well, it's free for the first six months. Is that good? Do you guys like us now? So like, <clears throat> I don't yeah. know, man. I don't know. Uh, next up, they had a teaser for something called Unknown 9 Awakening, which was kind of just a video of an Indian girl about to be beaten up by some peers. And then her freezing time, getting up, and then unfreezing time, and they're like, "Whoa, what happened?" And then like a cut to when I guess she's an adult and like pulling something out of a place she, a secret hiding place she hid there, uh, earlier in the video. Um, I say teaser because it showed literally nothing except for a title. Seems seems like something that might be on my radar at some point though. So we'll see. Uh. This is the first thing that got me excited. Doom Eternal, the Ancient Ones Part 1 DLC stuff was shown. And yeah, it's more Doom Eternal. I'm ready to go in. Campaign DLC, so yep. that, that has me more interested in than like multiplayer stuff for sure. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Then showed nothing for Dragon Age 4, basically saying Dragon Age 4 still exists and Dragon Age is important to us. So Yeah. 
almost would have been better if they just didn't bother. I don't know. That was boring because they sh literally showed nothing. I mean, I guess it's good that it's still happening and hasn't been canceled. Yeah. I mean, Bioware's got to be working on something, right? They can't all just be fixing Anthem. <laughs> well, they should Is Anthem be. development even still happening anymore at this point? Uh, the last time we had said, uh, EA was like, yes, we are committed to turning Anthem around. Yep. Um, This part pissed me off. They had this uh, intro to Back to the Future swell up and a little thing, and then Doc Brown comes on screen, and he's like, oh, I come from the future to tell you that Surgeon Simulator's out. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, 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 what? <laughs> so, uh, Doc Brown showed up, and he's like, you guys have to play Surgeon Simulator 2. Um, yeah. You gotta show this. You gotta show this trailer right now, or else the future is in danger. It's, yeah, it was weird. I was frustrated. Was it a Back to the Future themed DLC. Oh, it is. No, no. he just wanted you to play Surgeon Simulator Two. What? What? Oh, I don't yeah, know. I was frustrated. I got, <laughs> I got Doc Thank God for cameo, I guess. Let's yeah. say, I think it was just probably Keeley being like. I, I want to hang out with all of my like childhood heroes. You know, he got the Muppets on and everything. And this was probably just another one. And he's like, Hey, do you want to introduce surgeon simulator too? And, he, and the guy was like, sorry, how much money are you giving me? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. That's so frustrating. Blue balled, blue uh, balled. And then, the next game and then, bridge constructor, the walking dead. What even is this game? Yeah, they had a tr They. <laughs> They had a trailer that started off with, like, I can't remember the name of the studio, but the people that make Bridge Constructor, and a guy beaten up looking at a broken bridge. And I was just like, okay, what is this? And then he's running away, and there's zombies. Like, it's Bridge Constructor's Walking Dead, obviously. What the fuck does that mean? Are you building? Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what that game is. Like, <laughs> are, you, are you making a bridge so the zombies can get across? I think that's you're what making a bridge is... so you can escape the zombies and then you're blowing up the bridge. Like, I don't know what that is. Oh, that'd be kind of cool, actually. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know, man. Um, and then I, out of like, the... I think it was a uh, show tied, it was tied into the show because it had uh Daryl in there, I think. Oh, uh, all right, what then. it's worth. Um, and then they blew me out of the water because Sam and Max still exists and now they're in VR. I was ready to see. Yeah. Oh, they, wow. I don't think they overtly said VR, but it kind of seemed like they were hinting at it. They basically showed nothing though. Yeah. They kind of showed um, nothing. Um, apparently. And mm -hmm. I didn't know what the studio was that did it because it's not telltale, which those are the last Sam and Max games, right? Were the telltale ones. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try and find the studio that was doing it. Yeah, Happy Giant. By the looks Happy of it. Happy Giant. What is Happy Giant done? I have no idea. It says stay tuned for more. I don't Happy know. Happy Giant has made Oh man, this just looks like a bunch of like ad phone games. Dolphin Paradise Wild Friends. I'm sold. Hello, Grid Monster Battle. Yeah, it's like they've made a bunch of like some like AR phone games. Dragomons. Oh god. Probably just picked up the license. Um. Yeah, Lucas Arts is one of their clients. Anyway. Yeah. Uh. Weird. They showed, um, they officially announced that World of Warcraft Shadowlands comes out October 27th. There hasn't been a date. Trailer kept going now. on and on and on. Yeah, no, I was stoked on. about this. No, it was good. Uh, this was one of their cinematics that they do for new expansions that come out. Um, I'm excited to see the rest of them. There's four in total. They showed one here. Uh, then they showed Warhammer Age of Sigmar ground, Storm Ground. There's no info other otherwise. Literally just that that is a thing that is exists now. Don't know what type of gameplay it is. I would assume because it has the Warhammer license, it's a tactics game because like they all are basically. Yeah. Crash Bandicoot 4. They showed some 
new like a thing called flashback tapes which is basically just like a secret like tape you can get that brings you into a level that's very difficult apparently that gives you some like lore of what happened to crash and his friends before crash bandicoot one back in the day lore wise yeah weird uh they showed another trailer for necromunda hive wars that's a game that's coming out soon so that's there they were talking about this new game engine somebody made and then they apparently said you have to make like a little thing that i can show jeff Keeley was saying that to this dude who made this engine it called teardown and it's literally just voxels uh that it, like fully destructible environments made out of voxels uh think of it akin to like if you had minecraft but you could like literally blow off walls and like run a car through a cabin and that sort of thing there's not I don't much else at all i must have glazed <laughs> over there is nothing much about that at all but that is a thing apparently little nightmare we just could we just say for a second mm -hmm. that throughout this they had a, a correspondent from ign there giving away opening night live awards platform awards to games that to, don't exist i don't yeah well they, no they exist but it was like it was no, a bunch don't. of games that like weren't they're not, there they're not out so they don't exist <laughs> yet i don't know about that i mean it's the same thing as like an e3 award right like but but the difference there is like the e3 awards typically the journalists are playing them uh -huh. and saying oh yeah our site gives it to this this was just like is the point of any of this and and the choices were so weird because like tell me why won the best xbox one game yeah for gamescom and yeah. then cyberpunk won the best playstation game yeah and the best <laughs> like, switch game was night little nightmares 2 which they showed a trailer yeah. for that is, it was super weird yep I'm... completely useless also, yeah. there was a whole bunch of shit in between of YouTubers just saying why they like gaming. Like, who cares? This is all a waste of time. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of standard with a lot of these shows. I could Still see a that. waste of time. Uh, WWE 2K Battlegrounds had a trailer. Also a waste of time. Um, Savage. <laughs> I don't know. Those faces look weird on those characters. <laughs> they look I don't weird. know, man. That it's game looked fun to me. Game. I was going to play it. I mean, you, you can it's still play it. Game. It's probably fun. It's just ugly. Their faces are crazy. <laughs> uh, they showed some Star Wars Squadrons campaign info stuff. Uh, sure, that game comes out in like a month or so. So that's a thing, I guess. Um, they had some voice cast stuff for that game 12 Minutes. Uh, I'm really excited about this game. I am no longer because it's not coming to PC apparently. So I don't care anymore. I'm not buying an Xbox to play a 12 Minutes game. But... I hope everybody else will be I, I excited because there's some good names on that thing. Yeah, they got Daisy Ridley, they got Willem Dafoe. Um, yep. James McAvoy was one of them. Yep. So there's uh, some I'm good excited shit. for that game. I've been waiting for that for a while. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised we haven't heard that much of it this whole time. So. It's a coming soon, so I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if it's just all of a sudden on Game Pass it one day. It just drops. Yeah. Uh, the new Warframe expansion or DLC or update or whatever, Heart of Deimos, is out. Uh, that came out a couple days ago this week, so they just showed a thing about that. This one caught me by surprise because I misunderstood when the first one came out, but Override 2 Super Mech League is coming out. And yeah. it felt like the other one only came out, like, last year, but it, that one's, like, two years old now, so... I didn't realize yeah, it was that was, long ago. I was back in my old house when we did that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Ba Bagel has a skin in the game and everything. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fun game. Uh, I guess we'll see more. I don't know what this game is. Uh, it looks like metabots. Fighting. It's mechs fighting each other, yeah. Uh, Sims 4 has a Star Wars expansion. Journey 2 by 2 coming. I... It couldn't care less about this, but that's kind of fun, I guess, if you're into Sims 4. Uh, Mafia Definitive Edition trailer. Thing looks good uh, for an old game. Kind of needed the repaint on it. A game called Lemniscate was announced and shown a little bit of, which looks like basically just that Quantum League game where 
you like are fighting people. This one is in space though, instead of like an arena. And then you have like a 15 minute like or 15 second time loop where you can like reset or whatever. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like 24 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So that's a thing, I guess. Lego Star Wars, the saga, uh, Skywalker saga was delayed. They showed a trailer for it here and also uh, announced that PS5 and Xbox Series X versions are coming with the delay as well. So I thought that was a good trailer, man. When they had like movie music <laughs> picking up, uh -huh. I was like, yeah, man, Lego game making me cry. <laughs> Stop mm -hmm. making me cry. Can uh, Legos feel emotion? <laughs> Apparently they can. Uh, a game called Struggling, which is just this weird, like, arm homunculus thing going on an adventure, came out today. It looks like a, it's like heave ho mixed with um, carrion. <laughs> yeah, a little and this bit. was announced last week at uh, at the N Nintendo kind of indie thing. They showed yeah. this. Yeah. So there was just a launch trailer saying that that's out now. I guess game looks gross. It does. It Super gross. gross. Um, they showed some gameplay of a game called First Chorus, uh, which is... It's, it's, I think it's Chorus. I'm pretty yeah. sure First is not in there. Uh, yeah, you might be right. Um, oh, and they spell... And it's they, called Chorus. It, 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 it might v. actually be Corvus, because they spell it with a V and they not a U. They spell it with a V, yeah. So Chorus gameplay, um, uh, it's dogfighting in space. This is so much different than when they first announced it at the Xbox reveal thing. Um, yep. Because before it looked like a weird kind of like alien looking movie. But yeah, I don't, yep. I don't know. Uh, then finally, they showed Fall Guys season two stuff, which is I know a lot of people I was talking to is the only reason they were watching this thing anyway. <laughs> um, I think season two looks great. It's so far off, though. What a, announcing the season so far in advance? I mean, they said it was delayed I mean, I because from a, of everything. Yeah, they've had like a counter on their um game for a while, and I, I mean, I wouldn't want the seasons to be that uh small because I'd never unlock all the stuff in the past. But uh just as someone who plays like Apex, where it's like, hey, next season is coming in two weeks. Yeah. Whereas this one's like, oh, we got about 40 days <laughs> until season two. Oh, okay. But it's, yeah, it's all medieval themed. It looks great. My girlfriend is yeah, looks probably playing that game right now and she's excited. Yeah, no, it looks good. So, all, like you said, medieval themed uh, skins. I like the dragon one myself. The, some new dragon is a good, uh, good wizard. I thought the wizard looked pretty good. Yeah, the wizard's okay. Knight, the, uh, uh, one of the. Yeah. Stages looked pretty crazy. You have to like pull a block into position so that people can like jump on it to get past. I'm a little worried that you're gonna have to like work with people to make platforms. Like you're gonna have to, everyone's gonna be like, no, you pull it. No, yeah. you pull it. I'm not pulling it. You pull it. Yeah. Yeah, it should be good. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of brilliant in in that sense, yeah. especially yeah. if it's not a team game. Yep. Yeah, it did not look like a team game. It was literally just none of us are gonna go through until someone pulls the block into position and then we all start jumping. Which you know there's gonna be that one guy that pulls it away as people are go trying to go for it. Cause oh, that's, yeah. oh, that's, that's good. Internet. That's a good yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean that's the beauty of Fall Guys. That's the beauty of it for sure. Um Age of Empires three definitive edition, uh coming October fifteenth. So yeah, makes sense. They did that for two, so why wouldn't they do it for three? Uh, Wasteland 3 trailer, which comes out tomorrow. I'm super stoked for that game. I've been waiting for that game, so that... Game Pass. Huh? Game Pass, yeah, yeah. Game Pass. Uh, then they showed the new Medal of Honor, Above and Beyond, VR Oculus, coming. Um, I this trailer I, looked a lot less goofy than the first time they showed it. Yeah, I don't care about this thing at all. <laughs> Frankly, but... Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. The only thing I would care about is Respawn is doing it. Um, but even then, it's a Medal of Honor VR game. Yep, that's exactly so. what I feel, too. Agreed. Uh, that <clears throat> game that's been in what feels like early access or beta for fucking ever now, Spellbreak, the uh, Battle Royale with Mages, finally is releasing fully September 3rd. Uh, they show Next one, maybe you guys can tell me what it is. Turrican? Yeah. Oh yeah, Turrican's like a super old Amiga Genesis Super Nintendo uh, shooter series, kind of yeah. like Contra. Yeah. Okay, it definitely looks like Contra to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're good games that I never got super, super into, but maybe now I can because they showed an anthology thing is like being worked on, I guess. I got an email about this, too, and I think it's actually a new one as well. I was wondering if they were doing a new one and like what a Turrican these days looks like. It's probably just like a retro throwback, right? I would assume. I can't tell. Here's the email I got. After three decades in dormancy, we welcome the return of a true legend. Uh, developed by one of Europe's greatest independent studios of all time, Factor 5's Turrican series became one of the most acclaimed and well-regarded video games of all time shortly after its release in 1990. Mm -hmm. Now teaming up with the original development team, Strictly Limited Games is excited to bring back this legendary IP. I mean, looking at the footage, they were showing all the old ones. Like I saw Super yeah. Turrican 2 and a bunch of others in there. Yep. That's... On, on Thursday, an exclusive trailer and more about the special 30th birthday edition will be revealed at the Gamescom opening night live. After the reveal, we will celebrate the 30th birthday of Turrican by opening the pre-orders of the exclusive and limited editions. Oh, maybe it is just a re-release. Let's see here. I got the, I'm got i loading up the site now to see. Yeah, it is a, it's an anthology of all of them. How much is it? Uh, I'm looking it up. I'm trying and to see what's in it. For Switch and PlayStation 4, huh? $90. Uh, 35 euros. Okay. It's probably like $90. So apparently Volume 1 includes Turrican, Turrican 2 from the Amiga, Super Turrican from the SNES with Director's Cut as well, and Mega Turrican Score Attack from the Mega Drive. Volume 2 will include Turrican 3 from the Amiga, Mega Turrican, and Mega Turrican Director's Cut from the Mega Drive, Super Turrican 2 from the SNES, and Super Turrican 1 Score Attack from the SNES. Interesting. This is kind of interesting, yeah. This is always a series I love to watch people play, but never really played myself. Like, I like speedruns of this game, and I like the game in theory. They're fun. But I've never the Turrican games them. are fun. Yeah. Um, And then they kind of finished off with... They showed off the Destiny 2 Stasis stuff coming in the next expansion here, which is basically just the ice vert spells. So that stuff they showed a little bit of. And uh, they showed off more Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart stuff. I'm looking forward that to that game. That game still looks good, yeah. Yep. So that is everything. Some decent stuff mixed in there. It Overall kind of boring. Yeah, and just like really long. That thing was so long. It if was you watched like hours. the pre-show as well and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, a couple of last little things that I picked up this last week. Uh, Hitman 3 is going to be an Epic Game Store exclusive. Um, if uh, On consoles, though, if you buy it digitally, you can get a next-gen upgrade for free. Okay. If you get a physical version of it for either of the consoles, uh, you cannot. Uh, mm -hmm. And last... <laughs> Last bit is uh, that Bloomberg reported that Nintendo was working on a 4K capable Switch for next year. What? <laughs> yeah, that was interesting to hear. Um, definitely seems like one of the more credible rumors here is uh, definitely coming out of Bloomberg. Um, curious to see if that that actually does uh, show up to be real. I wouldn't be too surprised because um, I'm sure developers are getting already a bit annoyed having to like kind of pare down to get this stuff on the switch. So beefing that thing up would probably help them out. Yep. Sure. But I guess we'll see. Uh, all right. That's it for news. Let's do some questions. If you would like to send in a question, it's top down respective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, the discord channel or John's PO box. I'll read this first one from Cody. Uh, Cody has two. Uh, does it surprise you that Top Down Perspective has lasted as long as it has? No. So yes. Yeah, I'd say. All right. Oh, well, are you a no then? I don't know. It it's just a winning feel... formula of personalities. It doesn't feel like we <laughs> do anything. Like. We get That's together because we, we don't. We talk about games and then people listen. Like, who cares? <laughs> the we money would... makes itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I don't know. It doesn't feel like we don't, we're not putting like our own money really into this thing. We're not like having to go to like a place every week and like, oh, I gotta go back to the TDP salt mine. Like, 
It's just mm-hmm. us talking. Why wouldn't it last as long as long as we're alive? I think I, I think I said yes, just because of how long it's been going and how yeah. how on a weekly basis. There, like, there's so much. There's so many episodes. Um, yeah, I'm more so like we didn't podcasts don't normally last the longest, so I'm impressed this one's had as much last as long as it has. Yeah. Yeah, like just just thinking like 10 years, that's that's a huge chunk of my life, at least. Um, that's just why I said yes, but sure. I'm glad you're so enthusiastic about it. But I also agree with all your points. Like, it's not like this is the hardest thing to do. Um, and second question from Cody. Ever feel your enjoyment of a game is hampered by your desire to finish so you can move on to another game? I am specifically thinking of Sean's experience with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This happens to me. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, 100%. Especially when you get to that point where you know you're over halfway or like 60% and you're like, okay, I have to finish this because I've done all the work already, but I'm done with this game. (laughs) Like, uh, the last one for me was Last of Us 2 was a good two to three hours too long. I was done with that game two to three hours before it ended. Definitely this more often when there's like a lot of games out because then it's easier for me to be like look i'm not having fun with this i'm going to play something else and you know yeah if i think of stuff recently like that samurai jack game it was so easy for me to never play it again because i have like eight things that i really want to play right now yeah Uh, and like today alone four things came out that i downloaded and want to play (laughs) so things have got to be like pretty grabbing of my attention right now for me to stick with them for for that long for sure um but times where it gets like really hard let's say some of the tdp plus games because now i have a commitment yeah. outside of am i enjoying this those can definitely feel like homework yep i agree mm-hmm. um but uh yeah you don't know any more thoughts from you john no you pretty much summed it up there perfectly like that shit happens all the fucking time especially when it's a game that like you beat it, then it's like, okay, hey, if you beat it, beat it 100%, then you'll unlock like a different ending or something like that. At that point, it's just like, I don't want to put in the work. Multiple endings, I just am going to look it up on Google because I really don't want to go through the game again. John, have you sure. ever gotten that feeling where you started something on stream? You're like, this is fucking great. I want to revisit this in my time off and never do. But you know you won't stream the it time. because they're bad stream games. And it all the time, that, literally, yeah. literally happened yesterday, yeah. literally happened yesterday. We played uh, Metroid Prime and I was like, <laughs> man, I would love to play through this, but I will never do this as a full playthrough on stream because chat it's... will never let me live it down. They <sighs> will either nightmare. spoil everything or they will just hate the way I play. Yep. And then it's like, well, I have so much time off stream. I need to like do something I really care about. And I don't care about Metroid Prime that much. <laughs> I mean, well, no, I'll be like off stream and then I'm like, all right, well, I guess maybe I will actually start playing it. Wait, no, I got to play through the TDP plus game. Wait, no, I got to like, I got to like clear the office up. I got to like human. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll always be like, I'll always have a reason not to get to it. Totally. It happens all the damn time. Yeah. And it's easy to never revisit it after you've only put an hour in. It's like, well, I only put an hour in, so who cares? Dedinsky says, I mean, it, this is one of those scenarios where it's like we have so access to so much. Yeah. Right. That it's like harder to like. Yeah. Uh, it's harder for each game to to grab us. Where, whereas the inverse is true when you're a kid because you have access to so little. It's yeah. like, well, I'm going to play yeah. this one game forever. forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, and just be the absolute best at it. Um, mm-hmm. And then now we have just so much. Uh, so, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about in that aspect. <laughs> Daninsky says, what are some weird portmanteaus you can think of that make sense in context but are cursed and should never be used in actual conversation? For example, just like Metroidvania is used to describe exploration games in the vein of Metroid, uh, Metroid and Castlevania, I propose plumformers to describe platformers, which are some of my favorite pl- plumbers platforming games, Mario. Plumformers is hilarious. Plumformers is strong. Yeah. Uh, use an actual conversation. I hate sh- uh, Schluter. 
Schluter. Oh, Schluter. Schluter. Oh, that sounds dirty. <laughs> Schluter's good. good old Schluter. A looter shooter? I don't like that. And especially when they try to like looter into like like other other genres like a like a like a slash. So you get like the slusher. Slusher. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Slosher. Yeah. Oh my god, Schluter is so good. Schluter's. You guys not strong. heard of Schluter before? No, I didn't. No. Oh, the looter shooter. Like Destiny is a Schluter. Never heard Destiny referred to oh, as a shooter. I've definitely heard no. those. I've definitely heard those ones. Interesting. That is a, that is amazing. Like the only one I can think of that is like in gaming or whatever was Shmup. That was one of these. Like Shmup. A, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Hmm. Schluter. I know I've definitely cursed. heard some, but that's Schluter. Schluter's pretty fucking cursed. That's pretty bad. Just surprised you hadn't heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I can't think of any examples right now that aren't like, just yeah. like oh, like they're not as funny sounding. It's like oh, anytime I like a, a fast platform game is like a Sonic like. <laughs> it's, I use, it's usually like a blank like is what I say instead. Sure. Uh, okay. Second question he had is, have you ever made a friendship with someone through a video game? Absolutely. I definitely have. No. Uh, yeah, definitely. Like I, well, I, like I used to go to like land centers and play Halo together with people, and that's how I met a bunch sure. of people. Yep. Um, and final question: In honor of Gamescom opening presentation today, what's the most ridiculous superlative award you could make for one of the games you've played this week? Uh, uh, tell me why is the best Xbox game of the show? Marvel's Avenger is the best beta of 2020. I don't even think that's true. <laughs> but I could easily name like five. <laughs> um, I got to give something to Samurai Jack. Uh, uh -huh. Best use of a, of a property to the Samurai Jack game. Yep. Hmm. Best use of yelling at someone, Resident Evil Five, because there's a bu dedicated button to yelling at people. Oh, I thought maybe you yelled at the uh, voice actor. On I also did do that. <laughs> I also did do that. <laughs> but he also yelled at me back, so it was it was, it was even. It's good. Fine. All right, John, you want to take this one from Lineback? Lineback writes in and says, "Has there ever been a time when the moral of a visual novel massively improved or ruined the whole thing for you?" Oh, I haven't no. played enough visual novels. So I don't think I can answer this question. Like I'm trying to relate it to Phoenix Wright really at this point. Mm -hmm. I feel like the morals yeah. of that are just like justice, do good. Like there's nothing yeah. like, crazy going on. Which is why I'm like, mm, I don't think I actually have a point on that one. No. The whole reason the missing JJ Macfield in the Isle of Memories or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, the that whole long ass like, name. The whole ending and reason that exists and who the main character is and what it says about like trans people and like not feeling comfortable in your own skin and dysmorphia makes that game fucking amazing because the gameplay does not. Her. I was going to say, technically not a visual novel, but yeah. there's not a ton of gameplay to it, so it's not a big deal, but that's the closest uh, thing I think that's I a good point for sure. Yeah, I think... um. I, I, yeah, I don't. What Doki say, I would Doki say more is, often than not, some is better than it being a visual novel, like actually. I was gonna say more often than not, it. I feel like the games would be improved over ruined for myself. Uh, yeah. I don't have a great example, but uh, I anyway, agree. Yeah. VGC Kenny says, when typing, do you touch type or hunt and peck? Touch type, proper typing. Yeah, I touch type. I guess. Okay. I don't hunt. Yeah, back. ASDF, I home row. Home row, that's what I know it as, is home row. I haven't heard yeah. it as touch type. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I remember it was like grade, in like grade eight or something. I was a hunter and pecker up to that point, but then I was in a computer class. It was so easy. 
I had like finished all the assignments because the teacher did not care at all. He was like an he was like the school's IT guy that I guess they convinced to like have a class because they probably said like, you know, you need to like do more or we're going to let you off or something. So he did not care. So I had finished all of the schoolwork like halfway through the semester. Um, And I was like, you know, I should just like learn how to actually type. And then I spent the rest of the next couple months like learning to properly type. I don't think I do it actually fully correctly when I get up to the numbers, like the specific finger Mm. to the specific number. But for all the letters, I do the correct stuff. Yeah, there are actually divots on the F and J key to like feel when you're on the right keys. And I usually I honestly I do a little bit. You usually just file those down and tell it to go fuck itself. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I usually do a a little bit of both where if like I'm starting a sentence or whatever, I'll home row it. But if I'm like doing playing a game and doing something like it's hard because since I play keyboard and mouse for a lot of games, if I have to type in game, I'm usually going back and forth a little bit. So you guys do you use caps lock? No. Shift shift yeah yeah john depends on how much caps lock i'm doing depends on how much shifting i'm needing yeah Yeah. i think i still for the most part i'm just holding down shift and then typing because i'm not caps locking for that long um my girlfriend caps locks she will caps lock in and out (laughs) for like a letter it's it drives me insane when i watch her do that that's funny oh i guess that's me right where are we Suku Suku says, Deadly Premonition has an option called Cruel Production. It turns blood from violet to green. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what is the weirdest option you've seen? An arachnophobia slider was probably the weirdest one I've seen. That's that's super weird. Turning spiders into blobs is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably the weirdest one. Good implementation, but just the fact that you can just like take apart the spider <laughs> is is very funny. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call, that one. I feel like there I feel like I know an answer to this. I just can't think of it. Uh the Halo, I think it's I don't remember if it's a skull or if it was an option, but when you can have the confetti pop up when you get a headshot. Oh, yeah, no, that's Grunt Birthday Party. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say I would probably also go with Grunt Birthday Party, honestly. Yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah, I guess, like, the arachnophobia one is the only one I can really get on board with right now. That's probably the weirdest as I've seen as well. Okay, John, why don't you read this next one? Uh, from Rinku. Nintendo has now obtained IPs from a third party. However, the monkey's paw has curled and one will be good and one will be bad. They, bo- <laughs> they both must be that way because of their Nintendo-ness. What games are these? Holy shit. All right. Oh. So for the bad one, wouldn't you just pick an IP you don't care about? Yeah. Well, exactly. due to the Nintendo ness, I would probably pick something like, I don't know, like Call of Duty, Fortnite, a shooter of some sort, because they can't do multiplayer correctly to save their life. Yeah. You'd be ruining those franchises. Why would you do that? Because I don't care. Yeah, I'd say you just pick like something that no one's really gonna care about. Like I pick bu- like Bubsy. Nah, Fortnite ruin that shit i don't give a shit okay now what would they make game that... really good, good for their yeah. nintendo-ness <clears throat> that's just kind of giving like any good indie <laughs> game nintendo money right yeah, yeah. everything i'm thinking of yeah, is already much. kind of cartoony in some way so i'm thinking of stuff like yoku's island express give that Ooh. to nintendo that'd be pretty good Fall Guys with motion controls. Holy fuck. No. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I feel like Fall Guys is kind of just like what Mario Party has tried and wanted to be for its entire life, but it sucks. <laughs> so we could never get there. 
the hostility towards Mario Party. It's always so damn. Good. So like I would think Fall Guys. I don't want to give Fall Guys to Nintendo because they'll turn it into Mario Party. We're on eleven, twelve. We're on twelve. They stopped numbering after a while. Yeah, mm. uh, and then and then well, anyways, they would just ruin it and they'd put a board game in there. Uh, I'm trying to think of like some. I I want to see what Nintendo would do with Deadly Premonition. Honestly, I think they would ruin it. <laughs> but we're we're assuming it's going to be great because of this monkey paw. Yeah, but I just I feel like they would like fix a lot of the quirks and make Deadly Premonition great. <laughs> so but, well, that's, that's what like I'm like saying a... though. By like by the by the rule of this monkey paw wish, like it's going to be everyone's going to love the game. Oh. I have an answer. They're going to love it because of Nintendo-ness, and I don't think Nintendo-ness is the same as, like, a Tim and Eric sketch, which is what I often think of when I'm playing Deadly Premonition. <laughs> uh, my answer to this for the good one is they should just take over ukulele, uh, make the impossible lair that isn't janky. I mean, in that case, you're, it's almost like, give them Tim Tim. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like, why not? Right. Give him Tim Tim. <laughs> How about? I think this one actually might be kind of good. How about hidden my game by mom? It already did go okay. on the Switch. What sure. if? What if they made like a, a from the ground up? I think that would actually be pretty good. They that would cool actually not that. be bad. Yeah, that'd be okay. Yeah. It's kind of that Wario where or Game and Wario game uh, a little bit. But like, what if they just made it like forty hours long? Just like so big. <laughs> you guys remember Rusty's Real Deal Baseball? Yeah. Yep. That's just I'm just thinking about that. More than I should. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh Hebrew Lantern says, What's something dumb you thought as a kid? That everything would be better when I was older. Ooh, that's dark. That it's I would true. have time to play all these games. Bummer. can't i can't think of something i'm sure i thought of a lot of dumb stuff as a kid yeah i can't think of a specific thing i i thought it would be real cool if i slammed the flying fox as hard as i could so that kid couldn't get it on the other side but i broke my arm so jokes on me jesus <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> All right. Well, Rasterman says, what media franchises you despised or didn't get as a kid but got really into as an adult? I I actually have kind of an answer to this. Holy shit, did I change the channel quickly or hate MASH? MASH is actually totally okay <laughs> as an adult. It's not great. But like, okay. there's some stuff going on in that show. Okay. I'm trying to think of what I'm media franchises. Like. I can't really think. Can I just say like, drinking milk? <laughs> the news? <laughs> yeah, the news is big one actually. No, I I don't. Uh, news news sucks, man. Especially now, the news sucks. Well, yeah, but like, I definitely pay more attention to it than I did as a kid. For sure. Sure. That's also in like the same thing of like wanting socks at Christmas. Oh, socks mm, at Christmas is so good. So. <laughs> See, there's a point. Yeah. I don't think that I, I can't think of a media franchise that I didn't like and then I started liking. <clears throat> yeah, because everything like maybe I guess Next Generation because I didn't like it as a kid. Star Trek The Next Generation. Star Trek. Sure. Okay. But I like the original series, but I never got into Next Generation. And then, like, Reese got me into uh, Next Generation. All right. Nice. I'm going to stick with drinking milk as my answer. Sure. Is it me again? Holy shit, that was quick. Oh, I think it's uh, John. It's actually me now. Yeah. Decoy Troy writes in and says, Has there ever been a game that you've considered speedrunning? 
or learning speedrunning techniques, but were worried that it would be ruin the game for you just because you could never go back to playing it normally. Mine is DK64. I love the game despite its flaws, but worry if I learned too many glitches, I wouldn't be able to go back to casual play. Hmm. Ninja Gaiden and Gunstar Heroes. Uh, my answer is no. Yeah, my answer is also no. Uh, I barely replay games, so speedrunning one is uh, off the table. Gutang Clan, and our, our last question is, uh, my daughter is going back to school Thursday. I was in school. I had Tetris, Plane Jump, and a Mario clone on my TI-85 graphing calculator. What games did you guys have on your graphing calculators in school? Drug Wars. The calculator... <laughs> that, a bunch of people had that one. Uh, yeah. All the graphic calculators we had were given to us by the school, but we didn't get the keep between classes, so it was up to people to like try to sneak them in during the class. And oh, That's insane. You know, yeah, every time I had one, we just never got to get to that point. So We had to buy our own for the year. Yeah, Definitely nope. had to have our own. Our <laughs> school was just like, here, these are the loner ones. You get them just for class, and then you have to bring, drop them off at the end of class. Snake. Yeah, Snake was definitely one of them. I don't think anyone really did it at my school. I don't remember anyone doing it. I definitely didn't do it. But then again, I was also at a time where it was like, we brought our Game Boys and our DSs to school. Mm. So it's like, why are you doing that when you could be playing Pokemon on this Game Boy? You obviously didn't go uh, to school where things got stolen. No, that's why you don't. It's not. We had lockers. You know, you put your stuff in a locker. Yeah. Lock up your locker. What are you, what are you doing? No. Who goes to lockers? Take everything in your bag. Make that thing a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do. It, definitely in Canada, because it's like you go to school you, and your shoes, you're, you're wearing snow boots. You want to mm -hmm. go to class in your snow boots. You got to put your in your locker i never wore your indoor shoes out i didn't wear snow boots since like seventh grade that's why you got um that's why you don't have toes anymore they all froze off true that's why i learned what? how to drive <laughs> so i didn't have to walk through fields to go to school i would have frozen yeah uh, exactly yeah sometimes you get well then you get that you know you sled down the hills right into the classroom <laughs> Yeah, that's anyway. how that worked. <laughs> um, that's it for questions. If you want to send a question for next week, it's topdownperspective at gmail.com. That's TDP Podcast on Twitter, the Discord channel, or John's P.O. Box. What's your game of the week? Hellpoint. Resident Evil 5. Mine is Spiritfarer. If you're a Patreon subscriber, stay tuned, because we're going to be coming back live to do our Panzer Paladin episode right after this. Otherwise, catch the audio version uh, when that goes up tomorrow. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.